Hello, I'm James. Welcome to my Armour 2 editing guide, part 2. Let's start with units. Press F1 or click on the sidebar. Double click anywhere on the map to bring up the insert unit bar. I'm going to give my I'm going to do my best to give an explanation of what each other one of these boxes does. Pardon me. Let's get started. Side basically sets out which units are hostile really to each other. For example, blue four and up four are always ho hostile to each other. Independents can be chosen in the mission intel, like who they're hostile to, and civilians are not hostile to anyone. Well. Faction the side governs which factions you can have. Let's choose uh, British Armed Forces. And the faction is basically what military um, organizations there are on that side. For example, US Marine Corps, um, US Army, British Armed Forces. And the faction dictates what units you can have. I'll get to units in a minute. Class. In each faction there are a number of different units. There's cars, there's tanks, there's helicopters. And in class you choose whether you're a man or you're driving a car or whatever. But we'll be men for now. Control. At the moment it's player and on the first unit you in you insert into the map, it will always be player. Let's just close this for now. On the second unit, I will choose playable. Now what this means is that if I was making a multiplayer map, that the other players would be able to be this unit. And of course, non-player is actually AI, but we'll stick with playable. Now. The playable units have the purple band around them. The player unit has the red band around it. Let's edit the player unit. Age info. Now this one had me stumped, but basically this is... Think of this as being the last time... How long ago this unit was spotted by the enemy? Um, it affects the AI mostly. And the way of thinking about it is, if you start a mission and your enemies have been spotted 10 minutes ago, like here, then the AI are going to be, are going to react to that, their pathfinding is going to be different. Um, there is, I do have a website, well, there's actually something on the wiki I've found about this which has a very detailed description of all of these. I'll put that in the bar below. But basically that's when it was last spotted by the enemy. Vehicle lock. This applies to vehicles only, but as you can tell, locked would lock the vehicle. Unlocked would unlock it. We'll keep it as default. Rank. Right then. I'm going to increase it to Colonel, I think. Rank basically decides uh, a hierarchy for who's in charge. Let's insert another unit to explain. Let's make him a sergeant. Okay? Right then. Because the player unit is the colonel, both take orders from him. You can see this represented by the light blue lines. Now, the AI is a sergeant and the playable unit is just a private. So if the player unit was killed, then the playable unit would take orders from the AI. Now we get to unit. This chooses what type of role you take in the game. For instance, if you chose a tank in class, in unit, you'd be able to choose which type of tank, be it a Challenger or an Abrams or whatever. 
and as you can see we've chosen men so we get a choice of officers, riflemen, section leaders and machine gunners so that's it in basic special now this is interesting now none is basically none in cargo is used for if you have a if you have a group with a vehicle in it and I'll come to groups later on and illustrate this point further and you set all the all the infantry to in cargo and there and it's in the group they will be they will start the mission in the actual van in the um truck so if you have a transport helicopter and you've got a load of unit load of infantry set out and you group them to that then they and you put them in cargo then they will start in the ha actual helicopter incidentally if you have a helicopter and you select flying then the mission when the mission starts the helicopter will be flying and if you select information which it is now if i start the mission say they'll spread out there if i start the mission then they will all be in uh, in formation and not spread out. Let's try it. See? In formation. Perfectly. Let's get back to the menu now. Name. This is used to r reference this unit if you're doing a script and you want something specific to happen to this unit then or you want a unit to do something specific you would give it a name and then you would and that would identify it really skill is basically how good the unit is um, high skill is going to be a difficult enemy or a good ally low skill an easy enemy or a bad ally initialization there's a bloody word right then this is where you add scripts um, and codes so say I didn't want to have um, any weapons on my guy at all but uh, I would type it in here I think let me ah see remove all weapons unit that is the script to start with no weapons you can add weapons and what you like later but that's basically where you put your scripts description this is multiplayer this is what the text that will appear next to the unit in multiplayer health and armor right fuel and ammunition right these three sliders um, basically decide what state the unit is in when the mission starts. For instance, if you've got a vehicle and you put the fuel light down, it won't have any fuel. If I put the ammunition light down, if I restart, I won't have any ammunition. And if I put the health and armor light down, I'll be dead. Right. Hazumin, Hazumin. Hmm, difficult word to pronounce that. You see how it's a uh, like a clock face, and you've got a little arrow there. Basically, clicking on this clock face will decide which way the unit is facing. Or if you don't want to do it that way, click and hold your mouse button on the unit, hold down Shift, and then just move your mouse around, and that will allow you to change the direction of the unit. Incidentally, if you want to move the unit about, just click down the mouse button on the unit and you can drag him where you like. Probability of presence. Now this is where it gets interesting. Um, so you want to make the mission a little bit dynamic and you want to add I don't know, a little bit of spice to it. If you want, 
the lower you put this, the lower the chances of this unit spawning. So to clarify, um, so you've got your mission, but just you want for giggles a special unit, a special ops unit to spawn in, but you don't want them to spawn in every every time. Then you basically fiddle this, fiddle with this bar, and the higher up it goes, the more likely they are to spawn. So that's very likely to spawn. That's not very likely to spawn, and it just keeps it fresh. Now, condition of presence. This can be used. This basically overrides probability of presence as in it takes president over it, but um, see at the moment it's set to true that means that I will spawn. If I set it to false that means I will not spawn, even if the bar is right up there. There are conditions that you can put in here that will mean that certain units will only spawn in on the harder difficulty settings. Um, so if you've got, say you've got the a big armoured group of enemy tanks but you only want them to spawn in when it's on expert then you'd put the code in there to... Mm, I can't remember what it is but you'd put the code in there and that would mean that they would only spawn on expert difficulty placement radius well let's have a go here this is basically at naught it basically means he's gonna spawn where well, I've clicked him. At 14, it means he can spawn anywhere inside this radius here. And I think that about covers it. Hmm. Well, thank you. I'll be back with more videos. I'll be covering groups next time. I hope you found this useful. Goodbye.